teacher, teacher. Even in the midst of being virtual and being distant, you've given time to your kids to be community. You've helped them connect and talk about how they feel and you've still held them to a high expectation. I'm so happy that the three of you are here. Hi, Ms. Nixon. So I wrote, thank you, Ms. Nixon, for being a great, thing, a great teacher and for all the things you've done. Thank you so much for being awesome and making my academic experience and last year at South Valley amazing. Thank you for working hard to teach and educate us, even through these hard times. Thank you, Mrs. Sturgis, for genuinely caring about your students. Despite the distance and never having actually met any of her classmates in person, Torishma feels like a full member of the class. She even calls me Mrs. Sturgis at one point um, when we're studying. So that's how impactful you are. I had you for second grade and you're probably one of my favorite teachers that I've ever had. Misty always goes above and beyond, always. Her kindergartners are busy bees, learning so much in spite of this pandemic. Thank you for being my teacher through the kindness project and for being a friend. <laughs> to keep our children really functioning in this pandemic and, and still learning, which is unbelievable. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I just want to say, you know, thank you for everything that you do. This is awesome. <laughs> pushes you to, to challenge yourself to do better every day. Am I reaching them? You know, you just can't really tell. Um, so to hear those words, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I can't even say how that makes me feel. It's just amazing. It gives me more resolve to strive for excellence and strive to, you know, make a connection. Hey, Palm Beach County, who will you nominate next? Palm Skills Academy is a resource that we have built for our students and our families to be able to access on-demand assistance at home. It provides videos and on-demand help for, them, for our students and our families to access in order to be able to learn how to get help, how to do math, how to work with reading, how to work with writing, science, social studies. It's really that resource for our families to provide support. All those times when as a parent you have to help your child and when you go to help your child you, you do it, you provide the best assistance you can and your student says, well that's not the way my teacher told me to do it. Well now you have a video that shows you this is how the teacher showed them to do it. And that's what these videos are, on-demand timely help aligned exactly to our curriculum. So we try to make it very easy for our parents and our students to access and families to access Palm Skills Academy. So if all students have to do is log into the portal and go to the instructional continuity tile. So in the instructional continuity tile, they get to via the portal. Once they log on to that, they will find all of the resources they need from kindergarten through grade 12 and they can access the videos for every single core subject area. The videos can be very short. It might be two or three minutes, or they might be a little bit longer, five, six, seven minutes, all depending on the exact topic that's being faced. They will be available in multiple languages in order to support our families. So they are available in English, in Spanish, and in Haitian Creole. And then additionally, we are developing them in, in American Sign Language to support our students and our families that are deaf and hard of hearing. So we want to make sure that we develop resources available for all of our families. The benefit of Palm Skills Academy for our students is that it is aligned tightly to our district's curriculum. So it will follow along. This helps make it easier for our parents and for our families so they don't have to search wildly through videos or perhaps find a method that wasn't aligned to the way our curriculum taught our students how to complete a particular formula or how to do a particular skill. They know it's aligned to what they learn, their students learned in the classroom. Welcome to this year's Teacher of the Year and School-Related Employee of the Year ceremony. 
The best of the best in Palm Beach County honored during a virtual awards presentation inside the Education Network studios. What you do matters. The impact you have on young lives lasts forever. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing more sacred than a teacher or the people who support them. Let's give them one more round of applause. In the school-related Employee of the Year category, four amazing nominees from the North, Glades, Central, and South regions. The winner, Hernan Avila, an instructional technical support assistant from Wellington Community High School. When I go and to work every single day, I, you know, I just try to do the best that I can for all, all the students in the community. The Teacher of the Year nominees also come from the North, Glades, Central, and South regions. The winner is Toshimi Abe Janiga from Riviera Beach Preparatory Academy. For me, helping students and um, helping others is, I, I feel like that's a duty as a human being and a responsibility. The winners receive checks for $1,500 and a beautiful trophy. I'm just thankful that we're all here to celebrate one another, but more importantly to acknowledge that this has been a trying year, and even in the midst of all of the pandemic, great things are still happening here in Palm Beach County. Congratulations to all the nominees and the winners for making a difference for the students inside the Palm Beach County School District. The Department of Communications is your source for school district information impacting our schools, our students, our staff, and the entire community. We are the Education Network and Communications, together under one roof. From TV to social media, from the district's websites to its mobile app, live phone banks during times of need, we're here to inform and answer you. We share important information from our board members and district administrators through our on-air and online coverage of meetings and workshops available on YouTube, on Comcast 234 and 235, and on AT&T UVerse Channel 99. Information is accessible to all on palmbeachschools.org on the hub. We communicate through weekly electronic newsletters, updating parents, students, staff, and business partners, and in multiple languages, including Spanish and Haitian Creole. We also serve our diverse community by informing through various platforms, including social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We are your source for live coverage of all high school graduations, garnering tens of thousands of views from across the globe. We are your source for original educational programs focused on South Florida. Our commitment to students and staff also means providing technical support to schools throughout the district and partnering with the county to help ensure all students have access to the internet and the district's issued devices. Technology enhances our ability to connect you to your school leaders. We also bring you videos which highlight our students, our programs, and our schools, including their unique choice and career academies. The Education Network is your source for various events, including the Academic Challenge, Battle of the Books, Songs of the Season, and much more. We host district events, including Teacher of the Year and School-Related Employee of the Year, the Five Star Award Ceremony, and the District's Veterans Day Ceremony. Training videos produced by our team help enhance the work of other departments. So whether connecting students to meals or connecting them to Wi-Fi, communications, and the education network, keeping you informed. Stand is precise. No margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to load their minds. Dare to explore. Dare to STEM. Learn more at She Can STEM. Our dual language program is, is new. Many of the other schools have it already established. But we have it for kinder, first and second, and we started last year. What do you notice about those words? 
for our Spanish speaking students. This program is great for them because not only are they getting English with me every day, they're also getting my partner teacher Spanish. Well, our community here has changed. We have a lot more Hispanic parents and families that have moved in. Um, so this, it's important for them because they, they come, they're still, they're going to learn their English, but they hold on to their heritage, they hold on to their language and culture, which is very important. For me, when I started, I didn't know anything, but then I went to first grade and I got smarter, so I prefer to talk um, English than Spanish. I think it's important because um, you have to learn different kind of languages. But we can swim. I like to learn two languages because I get to help other people who don't know how to speak a language and I could have a better future. So they're getting their home language and we have a curriculum where one day when they're with Spanish they learn one thing and then the next day they come to me and they get that on repeat in the English language. I want to know Spanish so I know how to make friends in Spanish if I speak Spanish only. And now their children can help translate, help them um, provide the services or jobs or anything that they could do to help the family. Our teachers here are amazing. They have such a love and dedication to, the, to their students and to the you know, the idea of having bilingual students. I am interested in learning two languages because I can have a better future, like such as going to college, having a better job, and helping other people. Resilience and compassion are key elements of the state of Florida's Hope Ambassador Initiative. We're just here spreading kindness and compassion around campus, you know, doing small little nice things. William T. Dwyer High School student volunteers spend 10 hours a month creating a positive, <laughs> supportive environment to help classmates deal with daily challenges. We're doing positive notes and we also have mandalas as a way to like release anxiety because drawing helps a lot of people release worries and stuff. I feel honored to be able to go around the school and spread hope and peace and let kids know that there's a place for them here and they can achieve all that they want. Dwyer is the first district school chosen to be part of this new statewide initiative, which expands on the existing positive school culture. Hope Ambassadors has just been a great way for students to get more involved, leading with love, spreading kindness and compassion, and they're very passionate about this on our campus. Do you feel like you're a leader or a follower? You're a leader? I think you're a leader also. If you could only watch one TV show for the rest of the year, what would it be? The History Channel. The History Channel? I never would have guessed you would have gave me that answer. Teachers and staff participate in the kindness activities, encourage fun conversations, and support to help prepare students for a successful life after graduation. Not only do we want to make sure that they're academically prepared for the next level, but we want to make sure that they're socially and emotionally ready also. Students see small gestures can make a big impact. Being happy and compassionate to yourself and to others around you, it really has an effect on people's days. It feels great to lift people's spirits up around campus, because I know sometimes high school can be stressful, and I just, I love it. I love lifting people up.
Palm Beach Lakes Community High School is on its way to offering a new drone course where students will learn how to fly unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs. It gives me another perspective when I graduate. It helps me widen my knowledge on the subject and it helps me further my education. Seniors enrolled in the course can earn two industry certifications. There is a need to train drone certified pilots as the FAA expects them to outnumber the total number of certified private and commercial pilots by 2023. The Education Foundation of Palm Beach County and FPL sponsored the training for the course instructor and FPL also paid for the five drones the school needed to launch the program. We've been offering the course now for two years, but now we're going to take it to the next level and expand the program so that we can offer it to more students within the county. These are all skills that we learn in the class using ping, um, you know, like trying to get your IP address from your computer. Cybersecurity Academy is going to, um, we have a lot of software, a lot of curriculum that's becoming available to us, and they're going to learn how to um, navigate how networks function. Um, and then also a uh, step up from there is going to be how to prevent and anticipate any kind of um, security hacks, hackers coming in. And the demand right now is high in this particular field. And so students are able to also take industry certifications where they can leave high school certified in this, in this area and go out and get a job making really good money while they're possibly going to school and earning a degree. Just by being able to take this class, like just starting it basically, has already allowed me to like have multiple colleges like apply, ask me to apply. There's more jobs than there are people to fill those jobs. So the need to um, train students, people to fill those jobs is important and this gives us opportunity to go in that direction. My role as principal is to, find, to go out and see which jobs are in demand so that I can bring those programs here to Santa Lucia and prepare my students for that post-secondary success. Kindness is blooming across the school district of Palm Beach County. An act of kindness is being kind to someone else or doing something kind for someone else. Students at Palm Beach Gardens Elementary are learning the value of random thoughtful gestures in and out of school. They're donating new items for the homeless and gently used items to others. It made me feel like I was doing the right thing by donating things that I no longer use so I could give it to people who can use them. I'm creating a poster about kindness. Spreading good cheer, caring for one another, and treating each other respectfully is a daily routine for these students, teachers, and staff. Colorful posters are in progress for nursing homes, along with gratitude banners for healthcare workers. To see my students going above and beyond any expectation and just giving out of the bottom of their heart just to see someone else smile makes my heart smile. It's nice. The children enjoy their giving spirit and are reaping the benefits of social emotional learning. You can't describe it. It's just this weird feeling that makes you feel great. You can make more friends, and then you can have a good friendship, and then, you know, the world's happy all together. I am, you know, Palm Beach County born and raised, went to Orchard View Elementary, Don Estridge. And it's really cool to be back here to teach. That was always my big dream. I really like helping people. I really love to learn, and I really like showing and teaching what I've learned. I work at Olympia Heights High School and I'm from Mexico. Since I first came to the, this country, that's always what I wanted to do. I'm a language facilitator. I work for the ESOL department. I'm an assistant behavioral physical needs two at Jared Thomas Elementary. Very creative type of environment that I'm in. I work at Forest Hill High School and I'm an English teacher. The reason why I came into teaching is because I wanted to make When the sun sets on a life. I was born in Haiti. I lost my mother in the earthquake. I lost my father when I was about five years old. I lost my father when I was three or four. I was living with my grandmother and my dad, and soon after that, he got sick, he got cancer, and he passed away. Grief 
can dim the light of those left behind, especially their children. I cried by myself. I didn't like crying in front of other people. I just felt like I had no one to understand me. But Atlantic Community High School teacher Corey Walls understands. My father passed away when I was eight months old. He died of glioblastoma, which is a brain tumor. Last school year, she realized several of her students had lost a parent or caregiver. So she created Steve's Club, named after her father. I wanted to make sure that they weren't alone like I was. I wonder. The main goal. Where my mother is. Where my mother is. Build a support system of people. I am. Who get it. Confused, angry, and sad. I've spoken more about the situation to Steve's Club than anybody in my family or any, anybody else, really. During an in-person meeting last school year, I want everybody to grab a piece of ice in their right hand and a piece of ice in their left hand. A therapist from TrustBridge guided students through coping exercises. This club really helps you like realize that everything you're feeling is okay and it's normal. People to talk to, who I'm surrounded with, who all experience the same thing. This school year, meetings are being held virtually with guest speakers like Alexandra Anderson. Is this some place that you'll be happy and you'll thrive? She mentors students through the college application process. I want to see every kid in Steve's Club go to college or tech school. You got to go somewhere. You're not going to leave me without a plan. No matter what's happened to you in your life, your future, you know, you create that. While the future may feel especially uncertain this year during the COVID-19 pandemic, grief is inevitable. I do want to see Steve's Club across the entire county. To help more students learn that it is possible to live with loss. Like Jude, who started singing because her mom used to. I realized that it brought out emotions out of me that I wouldn't bring out when I'm speaking. Steve's Club is the club nobody wants to be in. But when you need it, it offers some light to carry through the darkness of grief. Steve's Club helps you push forward, push past all your insecurities, past all your hurting, and continue forward. You guys are here today because what we're going to do is you're going to help us get the eSports program up and going. eSports is an absolute learning ecosystem of technical, entrepreneurship, graphic arts, graphic design. There's so many platforms that the eSports can offer. Now to do that, we need gaming computers. The gaming computers can get expensive. So what we realized is we can take our old school computers, add some new components to them and beef them up and then we can use them for gaming. Are you interested in playing games? Yeah. Do you play games at home? Yeah, a lot. These computers will obviously run all the games we need the kids to play for eSports, but it will also give them the opportunity to do anything else they need to do. It basically is opening it up for them to, to learn and to grow, just like we do as a school and as a program. We could probably fix up a lot of our older computers and get them to run just as efficiently. This is going to be a student-led, student initiative from the get-go. We're going to get behind them and we're going to say, how can we support you and let them drive this. We're going to have them develop their own rules, their own expectations. All of it. We're ecstatic about this coming to the school and being an opportunity to really get those disenfranchised students in something that is huge. How long have you been playing video games for? Basically all my life. What do you like about video games? Basically the everything part of it. Challenges, everything. I don't actually have like anything that I can play on. I'll just play on my phone or if I could on the TV. You see those computers that are sitting on those desks right now that you guys just built? Take a look at them. I'm proud of what you just built because you're taking them home today, they're yours. Um, honestly, I'm trying to hold back tears. Uh, we just gave three computers to three incredibly deserving kids in order for them to be able to participate in the eSports program with us. Um, it, it's, it's a pretty, pretty amazing. everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people, connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. You're watching The Education Network.
is a word that would rhyme with Anne? I love kindergarten. I'm building words. Math is fun. I love art. Sometimes we get to dance. We're learning day sky and night sky. We love kindergarten. And we stay safe. Bring your child to kindergarten. Register today. The school district of Palm Beach County. Your best choice. Deborah Warren's father died of cancer before he achieved his goal of becoming a firefighter. Now, as she puts on the uniform, she is reminded of his unfulfilled dream. That it's something that I wanted to pursue for him and for myself to be able to complete the dream for him and for myself. Deborah takes giant steps towards that goal in the Fire Science Academy at Palm Beach Lakes High School. She is so thankful for the program, made possible by the Education Foundation of Palm Beach County and a grant from J.P. Morgan Chase. Thank you so much. You don't understand how much it means to me for them to allow me to pursue something like this, and I'm very much grateful for it. The Fire Science Academy at Palm Beach Lakes is in its third year. You guys are getting like the inside scoop on how to become firefighters, and you guys are taking advantage of that. Right now, 70 students learn from active duty and retired firefighters. The students can receive college credits and industry certifications in areas like emergency medicine. That's what the Education Foundation is about. That's what this grant from J.P. Morgan Chase is about. It's about kids and getting them ready for the future. And the future is incredibly bright right here at Palm Beach Lakes. After graduation, Deborah will be ready for a full-time job as a firefighter. The reason why our fire academy is so successful is because the kids know right now what they want to do for their life. They want to help people. They want to help the community. And this is a program that allows them to do that. Thanks to Palm Beach Lakes High School and community support from the Education Foundation and J.P. Morgan Chase, this classroom is launching careers and making dreams come true. Task complete. The Digital Inclusion Project, aimed at ensuring every student has a laptop and Wi-Fi access, is well underway in Palm Beach County. These power poles, donated by Florida Power and Light, are awaiting placement with those purchased by the county in some communities without high-speed internet access. FPL joins many generous public, private, and municipal organizations in this collaborative effort, spearheaded by Palm Beach County and the school district. Equipment is being installed on existing and new structures in underserved communities with the ultimate goal to grant all students, regardless of zip code, access to reliable internet in their homes. This effort, along with the district providing laptop use to every student, is part of the commitment to provide students essential learning tools and close the digital divide. Students here today are participating in the International Butterfly Project. That is an education and arts program that goes on worldwide where children paint a ceramic butterfly that represents the 1.5 million children that were murdered during the Holocaust. Boris was born in 1936. He lived in Riga, Latvia. His mother's name was Asia. I feel like it's important that we should remember the people in the Holocaust because many of these people were really young and many were kids and we should like focus more on them and when we paint a butterfly it's like a remembrance for them. I made this butterfly for Eula Kravitz who was born in 1939 and was last seen in Shoah but his death location is not known. Um, I chose to create this butterfly with yellow, purple, and red because in Diary of Anne Frank, a diabetic girl in the Holocaust, yellow was one of the only colors that brought happiness to the people that, in, that were, that, to the Jews, and purple really complements yellow. Students naturally gravitate to the arts, and through the Butterfly Project, students are able to make artistic choices that connect with history and remembering others. 
I really enjoy what I'm seeing. A few of the kids had a lot of information already about the Holocaust, and I think it being children affected them. When we learn the Holocaust in a personal way, we remember it, we own it, we feel it. The Holocaust wasn't about six million people that died, it was about each person being an individual. Each person had a story. Each child of the 1.5 million children had a future. We don't know what they would have been. And it's our obligation to remember them and to honor them. Come on in, congratulations! You are a thank a teacher, teachers. Even in the midst of being virtual and being distant, you've given time to your kids to be community. You've helped them connect and talk about how they feel, and you've still held them to a high expectation. I'm so happy that the three of you are here. Hi, Ms. Nixon. So I wrote, thank you, Ms. Nixon, for being a great, a great teacher and for all the things you've done. Thank you so much for being awesome and making my academic experience and last year at South Valley amazing. Thank you for working hard to teach and educate us, even through these hard times. Thank you, Mrs. Sturgis, for genuinely caring about your students. Despite the distance and never having actually met any of her classmates in person, Torishma feels like a full member of the class. She even calls me Mrs. Sturgis at one point um, when we're studying, so that's how impactful you are I had you for second grade, and you're probably one of my favorite teachers that I've ever had. Misty always goes above and beyond, always. Her kindergartners are busy bees, learning so much in spite of this pandemic. Thank you for being my teacher for the Kindness Project and for being a friend. <laughs> to keep our children really functioning in this pandemic and, and still learning, which is unbelievable. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I just want to say, you know, Thank you for everything that you do. This is awesome. It pushes you to, to challenge yourself to do better every day. Am I reaching them? You know, you just can't really tell. Um, so to hear those words, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I can't even say how that makes me feel. It's just amazing. It gives me more resolve to strive for excellence and strive to, you know, make a connection. Hey, Palm Beach County, who will you nominate next? Hello, I am Emmanuel Illosin, a behavioral health professional and mental health counselor. I work with elementary students to make sure they have a safe, nurturing, and caring environment. As a former juvenile probation officer, I realized I could make a greater impact in our school. Prevention is the key to changing a student's life outcomes, and I'm here to help. These small, square, handy little pouches are meant to hold face masks and are the brainchild of the Olympic Heights Community High School Hospitality Academy. Entrepreneurial students created the business from the ground up with the help of their academy teacher and junior achievement. They're crafting everything from concept and capital raising to creative social media marketing. And it goes right on your keychain, your backpack, purse, anything you want and it will protect your mask 
from any type of germs or anything. What is so exciting to me is that they get a real life experience. Um, they, they're not reading from a book entrepreneurship. They're not studying chapters and vocab words. They're learning hands-on. Academy students earn valuable industry certifications while completing their core high school classes and also learn essential soft skills they'll use in any career. As you go through this academy, you learn communication skills, team skills, social skills. You get hands-on experience. You're able to not just be doing book work and in the classroom, but you're able to go outside the classroom and get actual real experiences that you can use later on in the future. Pouches for a Purpose donates $1 of each purchase to the Hospitality Helping Hands charity to help industry workers and others impacted by the coronavirus. That charity targets mostly on hospitality workers and since we are in the Hospitality Academy, I think it correlates perfectly and it makes me feel really good at the end of the day knowing that what I'm doing is helping people. Pouches for a Purpose sells in school, at area markets and online. Number one is a, do you know what it is? It's an invertebrate. Exciting, interactive, innovative instruction is enhanced in School District of Palm Beach County classrooms thanks to nearly 11,000 smart panels placed in every instructional area. Across the board it's beneficial. I mean I've had it for two years now um, and I couldn't imagine not having it with my in-person and I can't imagine teaching virtually without it either. We said that on the outset that we would use that money judiciously um, and equip each one of our digital classrooms so every child could see, hear, and interact. And I would say, promise made, promise kept. The two and a half year initiative funded by the voter approved penny sales tax was completed two months ahead of schedule, giving teachers a new powerful tool to help prepare students for post-graduation success. Technology is a piece of the world as a whole. It's a part of what students will be asked to do after they graduate. So by using this in our daily instruction, we're teaching students the proper way to use technology and engage with the internet. Bluetooth wireless keyboards, quality web cameras, high-end microphones, built-in computers, and 4K screens are some of the panel's most exciting technological features. Our particular customization or integration of the smart panel with other technologies has made it really powerful and useful for our district, whether it's regular times or during the pandemic. Teachers and staff received professional training on smart panel use and features, and the district's technology trailblazers play a huge role in ongoing training and support. The panels, along with district-provided laptops for each student, are enhancing the digital learning experience. Our students are now able to become creators of content rather than just consumers of content. Now all of our students have access to high quality digital instruction, high quality engaging instruction, and just things being more exciting. When the sun sets on a life. I was born in Haiti. I lost my mother in the earthquake. I lost my father when I was about five years old. I lost my father when I was three or four. I was living with my grandmother and my dad. And soon after that, he got sick, he got cancer, and he passed away. Grief can dim the light of those left behind especially their children. I cried by myself. I didn't like crying in front of other people. 
I just felt like I had no one to understand me. But Atlantic Community High School teacher Corey Walls understands. My father passed away when I was eight months old. He died of glioblastoma, which is a brain tumor. Last school year, she realized several of her students had lost a parent or caregiver. So she created Steve's Club, named after her father. I wanted to make sure that they weren't alone like I was. I wonder. The main goal. Where my mother is. Where my mother is. Build a support system of people. I am. Who get it. Confused, angry, and sad. I've spoken more about the situation to Steve Cubs than anybody in my family or any, anybody else, really. During an in-person meeting last school year. I want everybody to grab a piece of ice in their right hand and a piece of ice in their left hand. A therapist from TrustBridge guided students through coping exercises. This club really helps you like realize that everything you're feeling is okay and it's normal. People to talk to, who I'm surrounded with, who all experience the same thing. This school year, meetings are being held virtually with guest speakers like Alexandra Anderson. Is this someplace that you'll be happy and you'll thrive? She mentors students through the college application process. I want to see every kid in Steve's club go to college or tech school. You got to go somewhere. You're not going to leave me without a plan. No matter what's happened to you in your life, your future, you know, you create that. While the future may feel especially uncertain this year during the COVID-19 pandemic, Grief is inevitable. I do want to see Steve's Club across the entire county. To help more students learn that it is possible to live with loss. Like Jude, who started singing because her mom used to. I realized that it brought out emotions out of me that I wouldn't bring out when I'm speaking. Steve's Club is the club nobody wants to be in. But when you need it, it offers some light to carry through the darkness of grief. Steve's Club helps you push forward, push past all your insecurities, past all your hurting, and continue forward. History made inside the studios of the Education Network. Thank you and welcome to the 2021 Principal and Assistant Principal of the Year. For the first time, a virtual ceremony and a category for top assistant principal. Today we honor the best of the best our school leadership has to offer. I am proud to work with such an impressive group of leaders here in Palm Beach County. During the ceremony, we see that leadership in action through videos profiling each of the four Principal of the Year nominees and for the first time, the four nominees for Assistant Principal of the Year. It says good luck right here. Now to the highlight of the event, the winners are... Our Assistant Principal of the Year from Palm Beach Central High School, Justin Arnold. This is something that you really have to go through before you learn it. So this is a little bit about my experience. So when I moved here from Brazil back in 2016, I did not know how to speak English. I did feel out of place. It was just hard for me to put it out of, put it, put into words what I was feeling in, within myself. I also didn't feel good about myself, not even like physically, emotionally. I had a problem of like, my parents, they are not really well together. Taking that to the school and then not having friends, it's like you're not only isolated at school, you're also isolated in your house. I was afraid that everybody would make fun of me, of my accent. I couldn't speak up a lot. And that, that got me isolated, got me very sad, very depressed. And it didn't have to be that way. My entire life, I feel like a lot of pressure on me. Many people thought like I was good and everything because I always keep the things for myself. And that didn't help me because when you have a problem and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and you talk about it, it gets worse until you like explode. That fear of being judged and that fear of being not like, not speaking English well enough as I should kind of just led me down a path, like a darker, darker path. 
and I started getting angry with myself. I think the reason why it affected me that hard is because I'm an overachiever. Like I expect things of myself and I think many other people can relate to that. We're all teenagers and we obviously we spend a lot of time using our phones, things as um, Instagram and Snapchat and then you see pictures from your friend you know, having fun and traveling and doing this and that. And then you ask yourself, like, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with my life? Because people try to create like a fake image of themselves while at the same time on the inside, they may be going through the exact same thing you're, you're going through. Like, we have to stop pretending that everything is okay when it's not. My parents, they would be like, oh no, but you're not gonna be able to go to a university if you don't do this or if you don't draw like this, it was really hard for me. You have to identify what you're feeling. When you are depressed, when you have these things going on in your life, and then you know that there's something going on, but you don't really know what it is, you have to like identify yourself and then talk about it. Just telling you guys about what I went through and t telling you guys what. I felt made me feel better in a way because I was like, okay now I have this group of people that can relate to everything I went through. You guys helped me overcome a lot of things that were co going on in my life. My teachers. I mean even nowadays there's so many different resources within the school where a student can really go and seek help from teachers to friends to clubs and you, you can even go to like psychologists within a school if you're having um, social or you know emotional problems and word it out with a, with someone who's a professional in the area like a psychiatrist or a psychologist you know there's nothing better you can do also I think we should stop judging each other because sometimes we don't know what the people is going on like what's going on in their life now I can look back and be like I don't want to be like that anymore and I know that I can do better. Learning how to put it into words so I can get help made me the person I am today. My story is titled, The Adventures of Chloe the Clownfish. Student Will Volman turns into a teacher during his ACE environmental management class at Boca Raton High School. Will's audience Kindergarten students from Galaxy E3 Elementary who listen to a story about protecting the sea. Chloe the Clownfish flies through the streets of Aquatopia with her friend Sam the Shark and Oliver the Octopus. We're the next people to step up and start to keep the environment clean and it'll be on our shoulders and not on not, nobody else's shoulders. We have to inform people and we have to take action at the same time. Will and his classmates act as environmental mentors to the younger students. They are making a difference. And now, thanks to a $449,000 grant from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, all Palm Beach County School District students have a chance to participate in similar initiatives through the Climate Ready Program. The goal of this is to build community resilience, to build an environmental literacy and an understanding of climate change. Working with the Pine Jog Environmental Education Center, the grant will fund a climate-ready institute for high school students, an after-school program for younger students, professional development for teachers, and educational programs for our community. You know, this is so important for the youth to become involved in this because they are the ones that are going to be actually handed this world. Three, Karen Brill. Here. District four, Erica Whitfield. Here. District five, Frank Barrieri. Here. District 6, Marsha Andrews. Here. District 7, Deborah Robinson. Here. We have quorum with all seven board members present. Also joining us on dais is Superintendent Dr. Donald Fenoy. And joining us here at the tables in front of us until they can once again join us at the dais after social distancing requirements are no longer necessary. Our Deputy General Counsel Blair Littlejohn and Board Clerk Carol Bass. Senior staff members will join us periodically as directed by the Superintendent. Viewers and listeners can access the meeting today by either watching on Comcast channels 234 and 235, UVerse channel 99, or by using the YouTube link on our webpage at palmbeachschools.org. We also offer a listening only option which the public can access by calling 561 357 5900 or toll free at 1 866 930 7015. The meeting ID is 1 561 880 1124 pound sign. 
This meeting is being transcribed by a closed captioner, so please remember to speak at a reasonable pace. Will everyone please stand for the pledge to be led by the superintendent? Superintendent, do you have any items to withdraw? Mr. Chairman, I have nothing to withdraw at this time. Board members, we need a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Mrs. Whitfield, seconded by Mrs. Andrews. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Are there any disclosures or abstentions? Seeing none, we have no speakers, no items in the consent agenda. Mr. Superintendent, that'll take us to new business, the XP1. Yes, sir, Mr. Super Mr. Uh, Chairman, I recommend the board expel student 2021-X-001 from the regular public school program of the school district of Palm Beach County from November 19, 2020 through August 1, 2021. Motion by Mrs. Andrews, seconded by Mrs. Uh, Ms. Ayala. Discussion? Just want the family to know that all of these, this hearing is confidential, that the student's name is not being released to the public. Uh, we had the first meeting confidential, nobody heard it. This meeting is being public broadcast, but your name is not, the uh, family's name is not being released to, the, to anyone. There, any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. We need a motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion by Vice Chairwoman Brill, seconded by Mrs. Andrews. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Meeting is adjourned. Call the workshop to order. The, the board clerk does not have to take the roll again. We'll stipulate that all seven board members are still present at the meeting. Mr. Superintendent. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. At this time, our first workshop for the evening is policy 5.016, school choice and program. And I'll turn it over to our chief academic officer, Dr. DeClinda Sheffield. Good afternoon, board members um, and Dr. Fenoy. Today's workshop um, is to provide an update to the district's choice Choice Schools and Programs Policy 5.016. The focus of um, today's workshop will include changes and updates to the current policy language and addition of a new lottery preference for our KA continuum that we've been talking about for quite some time. Um, at this time, Mr. Boggess and Dr. Johnson will provide an overview um, of the recommended updates and additions to policy 5.016. Uh, Mr. Boggs, I'll turn it over to you to get us started. Mr. Boggs, before you begin, if I could just ask the board, considering we have three pretty heavy workshops, if we can save our questions to the end of the workshop so we can get through them, I would appreciate that. Thank you. End of each individual workshop, excuse me. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Fonoy. Thank you, Dr. Sheffield. Greetings, Chairman Barbieri and school board. This afternoon, we come to you as part of a follow-up to our November Choice Workshop to further discuss Choice Policy 5.016. As a nation and state, public school choice in many instances continues to be redefined and expanded in ways that a decade ago were not available. Even through COVID, our choice team has innovated and expanded opportunities to continue to meet the needs of our learners <clears throat> and families that align with the student's passion and to create impact in their life well beyond the classroom setting. In order to continue to best serve our students and families, we have taken a deep dive into the choice policy and more specifically, the procedures manual outlined within the policy. 